and welcome on Primetime Watchmaking in the News and May has been busy. Not too much on the number of interesting new timepieces being released but definitely on some other business side of things and other noteworthy stories. A new a big purchase, a new brand, a bit of Basel World SIH Saga update and we'll also talk about a special photo contest you'll be able to participate in. So first of all, all my apologies for not having published this edition of Primetime during the first week of the month as we are all accustomed to. But this was for a very good reason as last week we finally got to go to Germany and visit the other main watchmaking hub of Glashütte in the Saxony region, home of so many very interesting brands. Some other journalist colleagues on and myself had been invited by the organizers of the Dubai Watch Week for a few intense days of watchmaking exploration and, and, and I can already tell you that this has been a fantastic experience and of course we will be, be bringing uh, to you guys special reports on this in the weeks to come. Also quickly wanted to mention and don't be shocked but we do have an Instagram account and I've really uh, never insisted too much about it but it's really getting pretty cool so don't hesitate to join us uh, and since we're really not that great with our auto promotion also wanted to say that we will come with some little additional goodies such as this absolutely magnificent t-shirt on our website because yes Viva Watchmaking! And finally the good news is that you are now more than 80,000 subscribed to this channel that's absolutely fantastic. Thanks a lot. Makes our little team very proud. Not even mentioning our huge thanks to our great patrons supporting us. That's also rising slowly but surely and really helping uh, making all this possible. So before diving in the topics of the month, I, uh, I know I'm not giving you a huge heads up on this one, but I quickly want to remind you that starting on the 12th of June till the 16th will be held in Geneva what is called the EPHG. That's the main trade fair dedicated to the suppliers of the watchmaking industry. It's open to the public, just a small entry fee, and I'm really looking forward to going hunting for some cool and surprising things and will of course bring you the best of all this in the weeks to come. I remember last year you guys had been quite impressed by some optical solution seen there and so was I naturally. Okay, let's now talk business and I'll start with what has been a very significant news. As Richemont, one of the biggest power group of the industry with its impressive portfolio of super high-end brands, well, they've just announced the purchase of second-hand online retailer Watchfinder. I've already mentioned a few times that we're in a moment of important transition in the retailing and distribution of watches, and this acquisition exemplifies this even more. Earlier this year, we are days after his, uh, his side change, in fact, uh, Richemont had announced the full purchase of net porter also known as Mr. Porter, and this online luxury goods platform would naturally cater to the sale of first-hand watches and not necessarily only to the brand of the Richemont Group. For instance, we just heard that Breitling actually gave uh, the platform a one-month exclusive on a special Navitimer 8 edition limited to 1,000 pieces, but Mr. Porter would sell only 31 of these watches. The remaining watches would then be sold in regular Breitling uh, boutiques once this period of exclusivity is over. So yes, brands are finally tackling very seriously online sales. It's just a normal evolution, but with the purchase of Watchfinder, this definitely goes even further. Watchfinder is a UK-based operation, employs 200 people, many of them are watchmakers, it even has its own physical stores and is already one of the world's biggest second-hand portal with approximately 3,000 watches sold per month and last year reported turnover 120 million pounds, that's more or less 160 million US dollars, so we're talking serious volume and one of the main difference with other second-hand solutions is that you do get some kind of service with warranties for instance or even buyback options without mentioning access to a rather large choice at any given time. Well, demonstrating that this is the way to go, we have other examples with some very important investments. We're talking approximately $100 million, which have been made in Watchbox a few months ago. That's the US-based equivalent of Watchfinder. And all this with the clear intent of becoming a global player with a huge inventory and also the same types of services mentioned before, warranties and so forth. And I'm pretty convinced that uh, in, uh, on this second-hand business, well, there is only room for a few big players, four or five at the most, kind of winner-takes-all strategy. And this is the main reason why Richemont made this acquisition, which came at a pretty hefty price, though this information was not disclosed. Personally, I think this is a pretty smart move, and I believe uh, there is also another facet to it. First of all, and while it is pretty difficult or even impossible for normal brick and mortar retailers to sell their inventory online apart from placing here and there and pretty discreetly some watches on platforms such as Chrono24 or sometimes according to specific market rules you may sell uh, 
uh, directly online? Well, in the second-hand business, brands don't have much to say. The best way to illustrate this is that Watchfinder is in a certain way the biggest seller of Rolex watches and we know that Rolex has absolutely no intention of bypassing their retail network by having new watches sold on the web. But for second-hand, well, there's really not much they can do to prevent this. So Richemont will not only be able to sell any brands they want on Watchfinder, okay, second-hand ones, but then I believe this will also allow them to offer inventories of unsold watches. Over the last couple of years, we know that Richemont has been purchasing a lot of unsold watches back from retailers who were facing difficulties uh, with much, I mean, greater stocks than needed. And it is a way of cleaning the market, an expensive but necessary way to avoid uh, fueling gray market channels. So now with the second hand platform at their disposal, well, this will indeed allow them to put some of these watches back on the market. And I'm not saying uh, all of these watches will be found there. Some will be recycled uh, diff differently, uh, taken uh, apart and so forth. But for sure, it gives them options. Personally, I think that development of these uh, platforms are just great for consumers. If you want a new watch, the latest design, the latest development, the hype watch of the moment, well, you still have your to purchase it, I mean, normally, whether through a physical retailer or the digital solutions that are kind of popping up and controlled by the brands. But if you don't mind buying a five-year-old watch, often as good as new, well, then the solutions such as Watchbox or Watchfinder are good options. You have provenance, uh, you have services, uh, you have service and guarantees, uh, buyback, programs and therefore you feel more secure. It's definitely a bit less of a gamble than some of other solutions that we see today uh, online. And I still think that uh, your local uh, second-hand watch dealer remains also a good solution. You know the guy, you can always come back uh, to him if there is an issue and it's always nice to be able to talk directly with your watchmaker. Real physical social interactions are nice too in this continuously growing digital world. So, and as promised, we will soon publish special reports illustrating the evolution of these uh, sales and distribution channels. But I had to come back on this uh, very important watch finder purchase. And regarding this series, well, we'll start with the portrait of a well-known Parisian multi-brand retailer, Chrono Passion, whose particularity is to propose and pre uh, some pretty unusual and often unique timepieces from a pretty wide range of brands, so showing a way how to be different. And talking about social interactions, I quickly wanted to share a special word on our first watch stripping experience that occurred in late May because I must say that it was absolutely fantastic to spend almost a week with a group of five guys on a rather intense watchmaking adventure here in Switzerland. The fact of exchanging and debating between the many visits we did uh, was really super, uh, it was uh, inspiring and uh, we'll soon work on the post-production of this road trip but it will naturally take us a bit of time so this will be uh, probably in the second part of the summer. And I can't wait to organize a second edition with a different program, hopefully for the end of September. So for those interested and want to, to join us, well, you'll, you'll find some information on our website, uh, link below, and uh, we'll keep you posted on this, uh, hopefully shortly. Okay, next big news, and this one also concerned the Richmond Group, as they have actually launched a new brand called Boom, which for me sounds like we don't really know what to do, so let's try something and let's make all the ingredients that seem to appeal to a new generation of customer. And when I say all the ingredients, I mean they went all in. No precious metal, no leather, no stones, uh, production facilities that are eventually will be closer to points of sale to reduce carbon footprint. So, I mean, the whole Shazam, and coming from a group that has such prestigious names such as Vacheron Constantin, Alain and Zene, IWC, and so forth, well, this may seem a bit opportunistic. Compared to the Swatch Group and its clear pyramidal brand segmentation, the Richmond Group has always been very proud of representing the only very top of this pyramid. And I can only have a bit of a doubts on the, the success of this uh, endeavor. So the brand is called Boom, B-A-U-M-E, and they insist it's really a brand of its own, despite the fact that you'll automatically make the association with suffering brand Boom et Mercier. That's the entry level brand of the group with Mont Blanc on the other side. So the watches look kind of okay. I've only seen pictures, but in, uh, in a world where you have the Daniel Wellington and brands alike, not even talking about the hundreds of brands launched on Kickstarter, I think it's going to be very tough to exist or let's say to be economically sustainable and sustainability being precisely something this new brand sees as its core value. 
I mean, these watches are either quartz, nothing wrong with this, or equipped with uh, Japanese Miyota mechanical movements, again, nothing wrong about this, though a bit questionable when you are Richemont. But the main problem is that they still cost quite a lot of money, prices starting around $600 to a bit more than $1,000. So, okay, it's much less than a Gégère Le Coult or IWC, but again, place against the types of Kickstarter watches I just mentioned, this is still quite expensive, not to mention the Apple Watch or other connected watch. And for Bohm to get some notoriety and brand awareness is going to cost a lot of advertising money and seems therefore a pretty risky gamble. So I see this as some kind of special laboratory mission for Richemont, test a few things with it. For instance, it will only be able, available online. You will also have many customiz customizable options to choose from. Uh, so I still uh, wish them the best of luck with this. I'm not too overly excited, I have to admit. Probably uh, time will tell pretty soon, in fact. Let's now talk about the evolution of the big watch fairs because there has been some news there too. So the first news concerns Baselworld and though most brands confirmed their presence for the 2019 edition, its managing director for the last 15 years, Madame Sylvie Rite, has stepped down or should we say uh, stepped out of a position or was asked to do so if you see what I mean. Well there has been a lot of uh, serious downsizing of the event but this is something we see in other industries too. We just heard for instance that Volvo will not be coming at uh, next year's Geneva Auto show, Tesla never came, so changes are happening everywhere and uh, next year's edition of Basel World will apparently change a bit too. We don't know much uh, yet apart that the, the press day will now be extended to a full day but it seems that there will also be a bit more interactive uh, dimension to the show, something I can of course uh, only encourage. At the same time, the SHH, which has uh, precisely taken that route of interaction uh, and saw its number of exhibitors rise pretty significantly over the last few years, well mainly, and this was due to the independence brands present at the Carré des Horlogers, well the SHH will reduce the number of opening days, Friday being cancelled, and that was the day open to the public. So there will still be options for the public to attend, but that will be on Thursday and opening hours will be longer too. We already know of a newcomer to the SHH, as Beauvais will now be present at the show that's pretty cool for them but I wouldn't be surprised if we heard other news regarding a couple of other brands joining in in the months to come. So a denser SIHH and for the uh, for the very high-end uh, client of the brands the SIHH will now be specifically open on Sunday afternoon for them with the privileged access to the new watches presented there. So we're reaching the end of this prime time and as mentioned in the intro of this uh, edition not too much product launch to talk about this month but I just wanted to add something special uh, and personal. The other day I attended a very special event as a few privileged guests were invited in lovely uh, Valley de Joux for the 70th anniversary of a great and legendary man Mr. Philippe Dufour. This was a very touching event for an exceptional man. I feel very honored to have been a part of it and you guys might see something special about this pretty soon on this channel. So lastly and as I promised I will now quickly talk about a photo contest organized by World Tempus, a media partner with whom we collaborate on uh, some occasion and you could be in for a full weekend at uh, one of Geneva's five-star hotels. Each month a new theme is chosen for the month uh, and for the month of June. The theme is sport and you can send in a picture of your favorite timepiece in sporty configuration and a jury will select the one they prefer as simple as that. You'll find all information on the website called Watch dash photo dash awards da, dot com and the best of luck to you I'll put the link also uh, below. So uh, this is finally it hope you had a good time plenty of cool reports coming soon we've seen uh, we've been filming quite a lot recently a massive thanks uh, to our patrons thanks for watching remember uh, we do have an Instagram account and it's getting better all the time so all the best see you soon and viva watchmaking <laughs>